Sometimes it storms on the eternal stage of history. In the domain of the storm, the people are deterritorialized. A new world order is established. As a consequence of such a storm, mounted tribes wended their way towards Europe in between the 8th century BC and the 13th century AD for almost 2,000 years, occasionally raiding developed and rich countries in the south. Carpathian Basin has been a convenient place of residence for many nomadic tribes that have been living on livestock farming and headed towards the west because of the migration of tribes. The leading tribes that put an end to the years-long migration and established empires and states here are Scythians and Sametians. Later on, Attila's Huns and Avar settled in these lands and they are followed by the Magyars, Hungarians. In this documentary, while we will seek after our bonds with our relatives in Hungary, sometimes we will catch a glimpse of some people we know. Here is Uncle Mehmet in Anatolia, brother Ahmet, and Fatma. In this documentary, Kumans, or in other words Kipchak Turks in Hungary, will be introduced, and the similar customs of Anatolian Turks, Magyars and Huns, the traditions, daily objects, the tracks of Ottomans in Hungary, and mutual words in two languages will be examined. For example, Ironchuk tribe has been settled here. Ironchuk means little snake in ancient Kuman language. For centuries, Hungarian plains have witnessed the raids and the migrations of mounted tribes coming from the east. Following the Huns and the Arpats, the Kumans settled on these plains, being the third wave of immigrants from Central Asia to this region. The Kumans today forgot Kipchak Turkic, the language of their forefathers who migrated to the Hungarian plains 800 years ago. But they know very well that they are Kumans and where their ancestors have come from. According to the Hungarian sources, two biggest nations that form ethnical structure of Kumans, clans of Kuman and Sara, have come to the western steppes from Inner Asia in 1012. Around 1020, they have sealed an alliance with Kimak and Kipchak tribes living there. Meanwhile, Kuman and Sara tribes have confederated with the Kipchak Turks, forming the third biggest ring of their ethnical chain. This union, having been resulted from political goals, have brought along the unity in ethnic identity and language, and the name Kuman has become the common name of the confederation. <laughs> Kumans headed towards Hungary after the invasions of the Mongolian armies between 1223 and 1238. Having been defeated by Mongolians, Kipchak Turks, also known as Kumans, were obliged to escape to the west, and their chieftain, Köten, requested sanctuary from the Hungarian king. Since the Kuman's escape from Mongols was in accord with the ambition of Hungarian king Bela IV of gaining more power against the nobles and the upcoming Mongol threat, the Kuman's request was accepted. The king went to the border to welcome them, conducting a ceremony and show them great respect, such as the residents of the country have never seen or heard before. This moment of meeting became immortalized in the great Kuman Millennium Monument that was built in Kargak city in 2001.
1246, King Bela IV made a new agreement with the Kumans, and in compliance with the customs of the era, he clinched this agreement with a marriage bond. He wedded his son and heir, Istvan IV, with the daughter of Kuman prince, Erzabet. Chieftain Koten reinforced the army of the Hungarian king with his soldiers. In exchange for having the same rights as the Hungarian aristocrats, Kumans had to fight with the king. They were applying eastern tactics in combat, and they were a considerable force in the royal army. But big landowners and the ecclesiarchs didn't like the shamanist Kumans gaining strength. As a solution to this, the church requested that they should be settled definitely and Christianized. In 1279, when the first and second Kuman laws went into effect, the Kumans left the shaman practice and accepted Christianity as their religion. The priorities and the rights given them by Lajlo IV assuring that they could live as free peasants were in progress until 1848. In Kichkunsang, meaning Little Kumania, and Nagikuksang, meaning Great Kumania, the Kumans had enormous lands. The king didn't meddle in the distribution of these lands among the Kumans. They were directly subjected to the second man after the king, Nador, and they had autonomy. As a matter of fact, with the purpose of not losing their autonomy, they didn't marry Hungarians for centuries. This also helped them preserve the Kuman culture for a long period of time. My forefathers fought for their freedom. They were from the southern part of the country. My grandfather was born in Tolda. He was a real shepherd. My father was a shepherd too. They pastured their herds here in the prairies of Little Kumania. This is a very nice place. Where are we and what is the importance of this place for the Kumans? Kishkun Felekaza was the administration center of eight Little Kuman settlements, and this building belonged to the Commissariat of Little Kuman, the administration center of Little Kumania. It is in Baroque style and having been providing service here since 1753. I am Kuman. Lachazians are Protestants, but marriages cause this disappear too. You are seeing the last traces of the Kuman identity. How did you learn that you are Kuman? The information reached us by means of our traditions. We carry on these traditions in our family. They came from Turkish television. They are looking for Kumans. They found. We are the last Kumans. During the centuries, we mixed with the Hungarians, but we carry on our traditions. The most important characteristics of Kumans are being honorable, patriotic and tenacious people. They hardly accommodated themselves within this environment, so they retired into their shell and didn't mix with the local people. Kumans carried on their story that has started with the migration of the tribes according to the oldest law of the world. They were born, grown and believed to be extinct. But on the contrary of this belief, they continue to live with their culture in the heart of Europe, in Hungary. Nowadays, they live densely on the most fertile plain of Hungary, Alfort, in two regions named as Little and Great Kumania. Their awareness of being Kuman is so strong in the minds of these peoples. When they are asked about their identity, they all give the same answer, I am Kuman. I am Kuman, and its sign is here. 
Kumanım atalarım. I am Kuman, Kuman, Kuman and so were my ancestors. They are all buried here. My father, my grandfather, his father were all Kumans. Yes, my name is a Kuman name and I'm a Kuman too. All my relatives are from here. We preserve our traditions. We are real Kumans. I was born in Flopsallaş. For how long you haven't spoken Kuman language? Are there any words you still use? I don't have any knowledge about it. Let me introduce you my family. The reason I chose Turkology is that I am a Kuman too. My father stands on my right side. I learned that we are Kumans when I overheard a chat between my father and my uncle during my childhood. And I adopted this identity. For how long do we know that we are Kumans and how did we learn it? We had known it from our childhood. It was the daily talk in our house. On the right side of my father stands my brother. I think he is a typical Kuman. And let me introduce you my sister standing at my left. What do you think? Are we really Kumans? We are Hungarians, but we were raised recognizing that we are Kumans too. We are from Great Kumania and we are Protestants. We have undergone cultural changes. Kumans learn about these since their childhood. Knowledge gained in childhood leaves traces in the soul. During high school period, we learned more. We were keen on learning. We are proud of our history. Due to my interest in history and the horses, my knowledge grew and my interest in the culture of steppes converged on Kumans and Kipchaks. I am very glad that Turkish broadcasters came here. I am honored and proud of being a Kuman and living in capital of Great Kumania, Karsak. Because this region conserves traditions of hundreds of years, the legacy we inherited from the East distinguishes itself here. Kumans have been living here for 750 years. There are 70 to 75,000 people in this region considering themselves as Kumans. Today Hungarians and Kumans are partially mixed, but Kumans have always abided by their roots. As a matter of fact, during the tragic events in Hungary, the Kumans haven't considered themselves separate from Hungarians. They have always fought with them for their homeland and independence and made all kinds of self-sacrifice. Kuman culture asserts itself distinctly in public beliefs, folk costumes and embroidering. The Kumans established rich museums in villages, towns and cities displaying articles, agricultural implements, costumes and even furniture which have been used in their region for centuries but abandoned due to modernization to conserve and keep alive their culture. These museums are so widespread that you can come across one in almost everywhere you go. In Hungary, the word Kuman generally means a person who lives in Kumania, but in real terms, being a Kuman means being stubborn and bullheaded, as well as the one who can support himself and the one who is loyal.